it's such a liberating feeling to just be able to go on about our day, think about other people, think about what we're going to do today and not think every single second of ourselves and our bodies. It's so exhausting and it's such a waste of life. Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host Tanya Tanya Tyler and I'm excited because we're going to be talking to Rachel Levin and we're going to share about your your body and and, um, not being ashamed of it, you know, letting go of the whole negativity that goes with it. So without me diving too much into it, let's welcome Miss Rachel to the show. Welcome my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I love when women talk about empowering others. And I was reading um, about your reading your bio. Um, so I don't want to really uh, announce who you are. I'm going to turn it over to you, tell a little bit about who you are, and then we're going to dive into this. You know, what is the safe space for people accepting their body just the way it is? So again, the floor is yours, my friend. Well, thank you so much. I just love to kind of give people a little bit of a background. I've been in the fitness industry for over 20 years. I started off teaching classes, evolved into a trainer. I also have a health coach certification. But my main focus for the past 15 or 17 years living in New York City was being a one-on-one personal trainer. And as much as the gift as that was, I feel like it only fueled my own obsession and my own fears about my own body working with women in that space. And so when 2020 happened and we literally came to an immediate standstill, I was thinking, what am I going to do with myself? (laughs) And what better time than that to write my book about my own struggles with my body, not only how I saw it, how I treated it, how I felt about it, but the things I did to it, like being on a restrictive diet and, you know, trying so many different things to make my body small. And so I did that during 2020, wrote my book, got it out into the world the next year. And now here we are talking to each other. <laughs> yes. Yes. And like I said, mention that her book is called the donut diaries. And she, like she said, it's her struggles for her weight and restrictive diet. And you know, we all know about that, how we're trying to fit into what everybody calls the right way to, for a woman to look. So um, I was reading where you said you, you got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And what was that like for you? That was just, you know, years and decades of, okay, here we go, starting the next diet, or here we go, I see the number on the scale going up. It just was such a disconnect between my body and how I felt about myself that I just, when I turned 40 years old, I just couldn't take it anymore. I just wanted to be happy, but I also knew I had no idea how to get there. And so I just had to kind of take out all the noise, take out all the things that I had believed about myself, about diets, about food, my whole life, and just start from scratch. And I will tell you, and your listeners, it was not easy. And there were moments where I just wanted to give up. But I knew that I had spent so much time over there that I had to see what over here looked like. And I had to give it my all. Right. I I love how you talk about, you know, the, you know, the over there and there versus the different thing. And um, for those who are like on that, that I guess would it be like a hamster or a roller coaster ride of the diets and stuff? What would your um, advice be? Because you, you've done the personal training, you've done all that stuff. So, I mean, and we're going to dive into like your whole journey a little bit, how you can break down, but Really, what were your beginning thoughts of saying that, you know, I've had enough? What what was your, was there like something that just said, uh, uh, this is it? Or was it just a mindset that just like over the years just grew? I mean, it felt like it was a big, big moment. But I know now that it was, you know, culmination of all the years, all the diets, all the motions, all the up and down with my clothes and my body. I know now that it was all leading up to that moment but when I was experiencing it when I turned 40 it sure as heck felt like 
the most powerful emotion I've ever had in my life. It was a combination of just tears and joy and feeling free all at once. It was just very, I describe it in my book as being just so almost like a spiritual experience for me. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I can get that because like I said, you know, our emotional breakthroughs can come in multiple different facets and stuff like that. So diving more into like your journey and, and how does it look like? Were you, when you talk about being spiritual, were you like journaling stuff or was it just something that you, you read about or, you know, how did you come to that, that uh, I guess that aha moment? I think when you make a decision that you want better for yourself and you want different for yourself, the universe listens and it provides you with things that you need to kind of assist along your journey. And so there was definitely some books, a few of them that I still recommend to this day because they were game changers for me. But I also learned how just to kind of quiet my own mind and how I had to physically change the script that was going on in my head to all the negative things that I had to start saying nice things to myself. And it wasn't, I couldn't just think it, right? Thinking your brain is such a tricky little thing and it can actually so I just don't believe that if you think something like I want to be happy or I want to do this you have to say it out loud you have to make it real and so that's what I chose to do and the other thing that I did cold turkey was I stopped asking other people what I looked like because that was only fueling the negativity that was swirling around in my own heart my own head so why would I exacerbate that when I'm trying to change my mindset? So that was something I did literally immediately. I stopped asking people their opinion about me and my body. And I started to say nice things to myself. And that really made such a huge difference. Right. I, it sort of like reminds me, you know, like we, we put ourselves in like a cocoon period. And mm -hmm. we're learning to love ourselves and then we emerge as this beautiful butterfly. And then you're like, okay, I can take all this other, you know, stuff. So is that sort of like what you're, you're ex explaining a little bit to us? I love that. You made it seem more, much more simple than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, there was definitely a point where, yeah, that is a really good explanation. I don't feel like I need to elaborate on that at all. For sure. Well, I, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, because I think I'm I'm in my 50s, so I, I've gone through a little bit of a transformation on different things. And, you know, and, and it wasn't, I never really battled with the diet issue, but I dealt with, uh, I mean, the weight gain was an issue. You know, my pants size got a little bit bigger. And I'm like, Ooh. you know, I got to start trimming the sweat, you know. But I think once I started walking, my, my journey was walking. I was like, it just, if I put that effort into walking, why would I want to? ruin it with a you know something that's just gonna counteract what I just worked on so that's what I'm saying it's like you it sounds like you had like um like a culmination of different tactics or different things that came to to you at once so do you think is um I'm trying to think like is it an age maybe a thing or is it is there like a feeling where you're just like okay I know that there's something's got to change what was it or what would you recommend to your clients when they're coming to you with this kind of um, concern about this is not feeling right for me? What would your advice be to them? Well, I do, to answer your question, I do feel like it was an age thing. You know, you get to a point where you've lived this like this person your whole life and it never really felt authentic. So I do agree with that. I think age does play a huge part in women and how they kind of evolve, right? I'm 51 now, so this has been like an 11 year journey for me. And, but when women come to me feeling defeated, because that's really what it is, it's feeling defeated. I tried everything I could think of and nothing is working. So if you're at a place like I was, where you're so open to doing something for the last time, as opposed for another round, I think it, becomes much more of a powerful experience because what we as women have done is 
forgotten how to trust our bodies. And I think that when you can kind of come back and circle back to that, like my body knows what to do. I don't have to tell it anything. And if I can just trust that, then I don't worry about the weight. I don't worry about the pant size. I don't worry about what I'm having for dinner. I, ju- I don't worry about that. And if any woman who is listening to your to our conversation has felt the way I felt, they know exactly what I'm talking about. It's such a liberating feeling to just be able to go on about our day, think about other people, think about what we're going to do today and not think every single second of ourselves and our bodies it's so exhausting and it's such a waste of life right yeah yeah it is it's like you're you're stressing about something really you can't really control because people are going to have an opinion on you every 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 any way but i think that i was trying to share with a couple of my um clients and and people colleagues that i work with is like is it doesn't matter what they think the most important opinion is what you think of yourself. Mm-hmm. Is this is what I'm hearing. Oh yeah. I mean, you're right. I think I I don't understand where that even came from, where other people's opinions are more valuable than your own. But it is our it's our society, it's how we roll. And I think that the more that we kind of say, no, no, I what I need and what I want and who I am as a person and how I treat other people is way more important if you think I'm fat or not. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Well, uh, before, I, I want to say uh, we're at about the halfway mark and, and Rachel's been dropping some gems. So if you've been picking it up, please give us a thumbs up. Maybe follow down with a comment below because we're going to talk about more about her book and, and because there had to be a shift in mindset to write the book as well. So we're going to talk also about her three pillars of fitness. So again, um, if you're liking it, hit that like button down there and so miss rachel as we dive into more about the donut diaries and and your book i know you know stopping to compare yourself to others takes a mindset so do you have to actually have a shift of mindset when it come to when it came to writing your book or you already knew i had a book inside how did that work for you i always knew i had a book inside but what was stopping me every time was because in my mind, I was like, let me write this book about how Rachel lost the weight and kept it off. And then when the weight would come back, we would obviously, I couldn't go with that notion anymore. But when I did decide that I had a book and it was really a thing, I realized at that point, I had to write my whole story. I had to write about the losses, the failures, the I have to start all over again. And that was like my whole story is my authentic story. And how else was I going to become relatable if I just was like, yep, lost 50 pounds, kept it up. You can too. No, because that's not real. That's not real. And so that I think was divine timing. It was the right time. It was the right situation, the right scenario, everything. But it was because I had finally learned to love myself that I could trust myself to share my story. Right. Okay. I, I love that. And it takes a lot of authenticity. And I always like to give our listeners maybe maybe three tips to help them get their journey started. So what, what three tips would you give them if they're at the point where they're enough is enough like you were? What would your be your three tips for them to say you're headed in the right direction or, you know, pay attention? I My very first tip is you have to... Like you said, I'm I'm ready. I want to change. I want to be happy. How do I get there? And if you are serious about it and you really want it, you have to open your mind and your heart to knowing that it's not going to be easy. It's not a light switch. I wish it was, but it's not. So number one is you have to be open to dealing with your past. You have to figure out why do I believe all these negative things about myself? And two... You have to be okay with being uncomfortable, meaning, like I mentioned, it's not a light switch. It's not overnight. It's going to take some time. So if you can be comfortable in the uncomfortable, you're on the right track. And number three, one day when you say something nice about yourself and you believe it, that feeling is priceless. It's priceless. Right, right. 
Well, I know you've got uh, some some great things, and we're at that point where um, I want to ask one. Well, there's a couple of key questions. So before I wrap into like where to find you and stuff like that, what's the one thing you want everybody to take away from this um, uh, interview if they don't hear anything else that you have for us today? If you hear nothing else, please know that you're not alone. Very profound. It's three, so simple, simple, but it's true. You're not alone. Yeah, and I think I think you know, like you said, right in your book. I know you have you have a podcast as well, and no. and people. Oh no, I'm sorry. No. Oh, it's okay. It's all. Oh. I, I just do so many interviews. That's all that. I, I see you so many places on LinkedIn, so that's how I see. You. I'm like, <laughs> okay, my bad. I know you. Maybe you have one in the work. Maybe that's what it is. But um, you have your book, and I think that's important too because you um you share your story, and I think owning our story is part of your authentic self, correct? And like being okay with um, um, owning our story. And what's the biggest thing about the story that we can change it? I think a lot of people think that if it's written one way, that you know it has to be a certain way, but we can change it with awareness. Is what what I'm finding as well. So I wanted to share that because she has a book. And so I'm segueing into the book because I want to know where can we find it? Where What's some great tips uh, that you'd like to share about the book? And if are there any freebies that people can use for it to connect with you? Absolutely. So to answer all those lovely questions, <laughs> my book is available on Amazon. Okay, that's where it is. But just make sure you type in Doe with a O-U-G-H because donut it's not coming up that way for whatever reason so type it in that way the donut diaries secondly i totally lost my train of thought tanya what was the other part of your question (laughs) where can we find more information about you your services and what you do basically yes (laughs) okay so please find me all over the social media universe under rachel lavin wellness my website is of the same name so it really easy i made it as simple as possible right so again thank you so much rachel for sharing your wisdom and your insight with us i do apologize for mixing you up with the podcast thing i forgive me sis (laughs) all good like you said maybe you're you're urging me along and on my journey maybe that's next for me you never know yeah yeah well, I wish you continued success on uh, helping women realize that they their body is perfect just the way it is. And um, is there anything that you'd like to leave us before we, we wrap out? I would just say that if we can just have one new thought about our bodies, which is our bodies are meant to move. We are meant to take care of our bodies. And even though you're hearing a whole bunch of body positivity and all that, great. If that's bringing your brain to change, that's fine. But body positivity, in my opinion, doesn't mean anything. If you don't love yourself, there's no way you can love your body. So please just kind of think about your body as a gift. It's your vessel. It's your responsibility to take care of it the best you can. Right. Well, again... Wise words, great gems, then picking them up. So again, (laughs) thank you, Rachel, for sharing your insight with us. We have my unofficial question. Would you be willing to come back, maybe have a deeper dive? Of course. Uh, Sign me up. Sign me up. Again, thank you so much for sharing your insight. And I want to thank everybody who also tuned into the show. Please remember that your feedback is always welcome. Links that Rachel will mention will be posted down in the description box so you can find that book on Amazon and we'll have the link for you. Please know that if you want to enjoy, if you've enjoyed today's show, uh, give us a thumbs up, maybe follow down with a comment below. And remember, if you want to get more insight like Miss Rachel shared and some of the other great guests, hit that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow and create your own path. And we will see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye-bye.